Hi, um, my name is Peter Barnard. It's an honor to be with you on this special Seder night virtually. Um, there's so many profound and fascinating parts of the the Exodus story uh, that we recount um, uh, on Seder nights. But one of the, I think, one of the elements of the story that has often troubled many contemporary thinkers is the is the insistence that um, that Bnei Yisrael, uh, the children of Israel, not just leave uh, e slavery in Egypt, but actually take with them gold and silver from the Egyptians, um, depending on how you interpret the story, perhaps by subterfuge. It's particularly puzzling um, because the this gold and silver is actually then used to build um, the golden calf in the in the wilderness, which is the, the greatest of all of the sins of the children of Israel while, um, uh, while traveling in, in, in Bamidbar, in the wilderness. So the question is, is why, is this, why does this need to take place? Uh, remember, God takes care of the children of Israel uh, in the land uh, while they're in the wilderness, in the desert. It's not as if they need this gold and silver in order to survive. They're not they're not using it for sustenance. They have man, they have, they have all that they need. So, so why do we need this part of the story? And why does the text repeatedly insist upon its importance? I think one way of understanding it is that um, it provides a model uh, for how Jews are supposed to deal with people who they have been held in bondage. In, in the book of Deuteronomy, it says that if you release a slave, you can't release them out empty-handed. You must give them from the from your from the, your threshing floor. You must give them from your from your flocks, from your vineyard. You must not let them go empty-handed. As we Americans say, this was the great betrayed promise for black slaves in the United States that they would get forty acres and a mule. That they would not be left destitute once they were given their freedom. Um, and so the Torah emphasizes the importance of the 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 sto Exodus story as the basis for this principle, um, and there's another element I think that's particularly in, intriguing. Um, actually, the, Jonathan Sachs mentions this in particular. He puzzles over the the line in Deuteronomy that you are not that you are not supposed to hate an Egyptian because you were a slave in Egypt. How could the children of Israel be expected not to hate their former slave masters? And and one interpretation he gives, it is, it is precisely the fact that they were given a form of reparations that allowed them to no longer hate the Egyptians, that it wasn't enough simply to be freed. It was because there was this reparation that allowed a process of reconciliation. Um, and that in some ways, this form of reconciliation, this, this, this reparations actually was not only, not only necessary for B'nai Israel, it was necessary for the Egyptians as well to move on from this this horrifying experience of these hundred years of slavery. I think um, it, this is worth remembering. It seems to me when we think about the responsibility that we as Jews and that the state that speaks in our name, the state of Israel, faces vis-a-vis -vis those Palestinians, those hundreds and hundreds of thousands of Palestinians who were expelled at Israel's founding, and indeed continue to have been expelled. Um, in 1967, and in smaller numbers, continue to be expelled even to this day. That, that there's a lot of talk um, about the importance of Israeli-Palestinian peace. Um, there's a kind of language of how people need to learn to put aside past hatreds. But I think the lesson of our own tradition, actually, is that genuine reconciliation, um, genuine peace, requires not only giving people equality, um, but it requires a genuine reckoning with the past, so a form of reparations, a form of trying to, um, to whatever degree we can, compensate people for the, the, the wrongs that were done to them. Um, now, the, the compensation, the, the reparations that Palestinians generally want is not gold and silver, it's not payment at all, generally. It's the right to decide to return if they want to the places from which they or their parents or grandparents were expelled. And it seems to me there's a deep um, message that you can see in the story of, of, 
um, Yetziat Mitzrayim, of the Exodus from Egypt, that, that emphasizes the deep importance of this, that there can be no genuine reconciliation, there can be no genuine peace, unless there is a form of reparations for the wrongs that were done. Uh, I hope you have a wonderful, wonderful Seder, and I'm grateful to be able to have played a, to been uh, a small uh, participant even from uh, an ocean away. Chag uh, Sameach.